Here are the top stories for today, May 3, 2021. Result on clinical trials on Lagundi, VCO, and Tawa Tawa as anti-COVID treatment will be out by June. Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana says the president is firm on his order to defend the country amid the row in the disputed West Philippine Sea. More health experts are warning the public against the indiscriminate and unregulated use of ivermectin. And the PMA's top notcher for this year hails from Negros Occidental. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Residents in five NCR cities will start using the Sputnik V vaccines from Russia. Five cities in Metro Manila received 3,000 doses each for the initial vaccine rollout. These are the cities of Makati, Taguig, Muntinlupa, Manila, and Paranaque. These cities have storage facilities that could store the jabs at the required temperature of negative 18 degrees Celsius. 480,000 doses more of Sputnik V are expected to arrive this month. Meanwhile, Dr. Nina Gloriani of the Vaccine Expert Panel said they have carefully evaluated Sputnik V and looked into reports of alleged adverse side effects of the Russian-made vaccine in other countries. So yun po ang pinag-uusapan, mukhang na misunderstand po nung Brazil yun, but of course we are closely monitoring ano magiging uh, um, explanation on both sides. Pero sa palagay namin, wala pong issue. Results of the clinical trials for the use of Lagundi, virgin coconut oil, and Tawa Tawa against COVID-19 may be out next month. Filipino researchers earlier studied the possible benefits of herbal plants Tawa Tawa and Lagundi to reduce a person's infectivity from COVID-19. The proponents of this study involve a group of pharmaceutical industry people from the University of the Philippines, Philippine General Hospital. Lagundi tablet or syrup is a proven bronchodilator with its registered indication for the treatment of cough, which is a suitable choice for the symptomatic treatment of COVID-19 patients. Tawa Tawa and virgin coconut oil, on the other hand, was proven to have antiviral properties. Lagundi, Tawa Tawa at BCO, sana po ay matapos na at ang target po natin ay mga katapusan po ng Hunyo. Sa virgin coconut oil po, may mga natapos na Pero kailangan pa po natin ng more studies to be done sa iba pang populasyon uh, para matina pa po ibang aspeto para mas malakas po ang katibayan o ebidensya na ito po ay maaaring karagdagang gamot para sa mga mayroong COVID-19. Two sacks containing undistributed certificates of land ownership award were found inside the Office of the Land Transfer and Implementation Division in Cebu. These certificates are dated back to 1987 until 2020 and are found inside the Office of the Land Transfer and Implementation Division in Cebu. Secretary John Castrichones of the Department of Agrarian Reform said these local officials will be slapped with administrative charges in court. He also vowed to distribute the 254,000 hectares of Certificate of Land Ownership awards immediately. Malacanang said retired Supreme Court Associate Justice Antonio Carpio and former Foreign Secretary Albert Del Rosario should stop misleading and endangering Filipinos with their illegal statements on the West Philippine Sea. This after Carpio said that Filipinos should demand a leader who will defend Philippine sovereignty and sovereign rights, while Del Rosario urged Duterte to do his utmost to protect the disputed island and to be wary of China's duplicity. Presidential spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque said President Duterte has a careful and calibrated approach on the matter. Itigil na nila ang kanilang paninilang sa taong bayad sa kanilang mga illegal, impractical at irresponsabling pananalita. Hindi sila nakakatulog. Hayaan na nila si Presidente na may foresight, information at mandato ay sa ating salikang batas na gumawa ng sound foreign policy decisions. Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana dismissed claims that his recent statements on the Chinese incursions in the West Philippine Sea are not aligned with those of President Rodrigo Duterte. 
He said the order of the president have been very firm and straightforward and that it is to defend the country's possessions without going to war. Lorenzana earlier said China has no legal basis to prevent the Philippines from conducting maritime exercises in the West Philippine Sea. This came following China's calls to stop the ongoing maritime exercises of the Philippine Coast Guard and the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, saying such actions are complicating the situation and escalating the disputes. Lorenzana said, we can be cordial and cooperative with other nations, but not at the expense of our sovereignty and sovereign rights. The Philippine College of Physicians warned the public against the indiscriminate and unregulated use of ivermectin. In an online media forum, Philippine College of Physicians President Dr. Mario Panaligan said, Ivermectin has effects in the treatment of parasites, especially in animals. However, there is insufficient evidence to recommend that it could treat patients with mild to moderate COVID-19 symptoms. Ivermectin products were used for certain animal species to treat internal and external parasites as well as the prevention of heartworm disease. The world's coronavirus disease 2019 cases have climbed to more than 152 million with over 19.4 million people currently undergoing treatment. Reports from global data aggregators show that the United States has the highest number of confirmed cases with over 33.1 million, followed by India with 19.16 million and Brazil with 14.66 million infections since the pandemic began. India, which is currently battling a surge in cases and a potentially more transmissible variant of coronavirus, posted record high daily new infections at 402,110 in the last 24 hours. Tally from the Worldometer show that India has the fourth highest number of deaths in the world with more than 3,000 new fatalities in a day. India has begun receiving aid from different nations. In Southeast Asia, Indonesia has the highest number of active cases followed by the Philippines, Malaysia, Thailand, Cambodia, Myanmar, Timor-Leste, Laos, Singapore, Vietnam, and Brunei. While Indonesia and the Philippines have the highest number of confirmed cases, the two nations also have recorded a significantly high number of recoveries. Indonesia ranks first in the number of people vaccinated, followed by Singapore, Cambodia, the Philippines, Malaysia, Thailand, Myanmar, Vietnam, Laos, and Brunei. Here is a look at COVID-19 figures worldwide. Up next, PMA's top notcher for this year hails from Negros Occidental. Meanwhile, Senator Aimee Marcos is pushing for more relief measures for Filipino workers. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. Pangalagaan ng sarili laban sa Coronavirus Disease 2019 Hanggat maaari, umiwas sa mataong lugar Iwasang hawakan ang ilong at bibig Maging malinis sa katawan at ugaliin ang wastong paghuhugas ng kamay Takpan ang ilong at bibig kung uubo o babahing Umiwas sa mga taong nagpapakita ng sintomas ng Coronavirus Disease Gaya ng lagnat, ubo at sipon Magsuot ng face mask kung kinakailangan Basta't sama-sama at laging handa. Kaya natin to isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Twenty-five-year-old Janre Cabanero Artus of Negros Occidental is this year's top graduating cadet of the PMA. Artus will receive 15 awards including the Presidential Sabre, 
Philippine Navy Saber, Australian Defense Award, Spanish Armed Forces Award, General Antonio Luna Award, Academic Graduate Award, among others. The others in the top 10 are... Top 2 graduate is Daryl Briggs Ramos Colita of Davao del Sur, followed by Valerie May Vicente Dicang of La Trinidad Benguet, Jan Hernan Rebadulla Perez of Alabang Muntinlupa, Christine Joyce Glodovisa Andog of Cabanatuan Nueva Ecija, Fel Joy Bagabaldo Ending of Oroqueta City, Misamis Occidental, Harold Mars Alicpala Sastoda of Batanga City, Pamela Avila Calleja of Malinao Albay, Michael Angelo Ariola Madriaga of Tabuk City, Kalinga, and Shirley Fatima Egia Lim of Tacloban, Leyte. The Masiligan or Manirigmang Samahan ng Lakas at Sandiga ng Bayan PMA Class for 2021 will have its graduation on May 10 and will be aired live via the official Facebook page of the Academy. Lawmakers and business sectors come up with recommendations for the benefit of workers both in the government and private institutions. The details from Marita Moai. Senator Aimi Marcos is pushing for more relief measures to mitigate the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. During the Task Group on Economic Recovery and National Employment Recovery Strategy Job Summit, Marcos said the failure to provide adequate social protection as well as medical cover will lead to prolonged lockdowns. Marcos also stressed the importance of expanding the unemployment insurance benefits of the social security system so that it would truthfully cover the labor sector. Meanwhile, Representative Raymond Mendoza, who is also the President of the Trade Union Congress of the Philippines, appealed to President Rodrigo Duterte to certify as urgent the passage of the Public Service Labor Relations Convention for the International Labor Organization Convention. The law aims to protect government workers to organize and negotiate conditions of employment. He also pushed for the regularization of all government workers who have provided three years of satisfactory service. And to revive the economy as soon as possible, the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry recommends to the government to accelerate its vaccine rollout and prioritize the inoculation of industry workers. PCCI President and Ambassador Benedicto Yuhiko said industry workers must be recognized as essential economic frontliners. He also urged the government to provide exemptions or East requirements in mobility restrictions among workers. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Marita Muahe. The Philippine Statistics Authority, or PSA, reminds the public that aside from being a valid identification, the Philippine Identification System, or National ID, is for life without the need for renewal. The frontline implementer of PhilSys said the national ID is also for free. The PSA, meanwhile, answered queries as to why low-income families are the first in line for the registration. The PSA said that primarily, the Phil ID is designed to cater to the less privileged families who are in need yet cannot access basic services due to lack of valid identification. Valid identification is also a requirement in order to avail of credit windows from the private institutions. The PSA also said resident aliens have to renew their PhilSys ID. PSA is targeting to register up to 50 million Filipinos and resident aliens by the year 2022. In Iligan City, the local government intensifies its vaccination drive against tuberculosis as the city is classified as a highly urbanized area with high cases of the disease. Claire Gighe will give us an update on the said inoculation campaign. 
The Ligan City Health Office, or CHO, and the Maranao People Development Center, or Maradeca, in partnership with the Philippine Business for Social Progress, or PBSP, conducted a 16-day access TV program in 30 barangays in the city, targeting to cover 2,500 Iliganons. The program is said to achieve high coverage for identified high-risk or vulnerable groups, especially in the case of tuberculosis. Ginawa po namin ito para po mapalapit po sa mga taong malayo po sa syudad para po makita natin kung uh, positive ba sila or hindi sa TB. Para uh, if in case nga may mga mag-positive po ba, ma-decrease po natin ang uh, mga cases. Magamot yung mga mag-positive at saka para po ma uh, maiwasang makatakot sila sa ibang tao. Dr. Ardel Castaneda Padayhag, CHO Medical Officer 3, bared that as Iligan City is classified as a highly urbanized city with lots of TB cases, they are conducting screening to ensure that such disease will be treated immediately. The Access TB program offered free chest x-ray to detect lung issues that may be linked to TB while also giving out vitamins and ointments to citizens. With the ongoing program, Padayhag then stressed that if symptoms of TB, which includes cough that lasts for two weeks and is not yet cured with basic medicine, back pain, loss of appetite, and evening fever are already noticed, medical consultations must already be done. Kung naigibati nga sama sa symptoms para sa tuberculosis, pakonsulta na dayon mo. You can go to the nearest health centers. Anyways, Iligan have 44 barangays. All barangays have health centers. They can go there. Meanwhile, beneficiaries of the program expressed their gratitude to the delivered medical service in their area. For PNA Newsroom, Claire Gigha of the Philippine Information Agency, Iligan City Information Center. The government has allocated 2.5 trillion pesos this year as part of the government's three-pronged approach for economic recovery. Socioeconomic Planning Secretary Carl Kendrick Chua said the total budget for economic recovery this year is equivalent to 14% of the country's gross domestic product or GDP. Chua said about 2 trillion pesos or 11.3% of GDP will come from the 2021 General Appropriations Act. On top of this, the government also implements 478 billion pesos worth of fiscal measures this year, including Bayanihan 2, the social amelioration program for the NCR Plus bubble, and the provision of tax breaks to all enterprises under the CREATE law. Chua, meanwhile, said that for the country to safely reopen uh, businesses and recover jobs, the government should ensure strengthening of its prevent, detect, isolate, treat, and reintegrate strategy as well as the timely implementation of the vaccination program. Technical Education and Skills Development Authority or TESDA Chief Isidro La Peña has pushed for a whole-of-society effort to overcome the socio-economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Speaking at the National Employment Recovery Strategy Summit, La Peña said the task group on economic recovery rallied various sectors to unite and collaborate. La Peña acknowledged that the COVID-19 pandemic has brought challenges and uncertainties to various sectors. He emphasized the value of social dialogue, synergy and commitment of all stakeholders to work for a resilient economy. Meantime, the test of chief said the public, especially the vulnerable sectors, can expect upskilling and retooling programs from the agency. This includes scholarship training programs that would provide additional skills to the workers. Together with the Department of Transportation, TESDA will relaunch a Tuper Escolar program for the stakeholders in the transportation sector. Still to come, overseas Filipinos in India are seeing each day as a battle for survival. Meanwhile, a high school student in Abra bagged awards for their functional robot entries in an online competition. 
The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Sa matinding laban natin sa Coronavirus Disease 2019, sugpuin din natin ang pagkalat ng fake news. Huwag magbahagi ng impormasyon na hindi tiyak ang pinagmulan. I-check mabuti ang source ng balita. Kumuha lamang ng impormasyon mula sa mga official channel ng Department of Health. Huwag magpadala sa maling balita. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa. Kaya natin to isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at nang himpilang ito. You're still watching the PNA Newsroom. Pandemic restrictions and lack of materials did not deter six students of Abra High School from joining the World Robot Games Online Edition. Their determination paid off as they bagged two bronze medals. The two teams composed of grades 9 and 10 students came up with projects that can help prevent the spread of COVID-19. They submitted as their entries the portable dual-powered hands-free sanitation station and the sensor automatic and contactless disinfection channel. Teacher and coach Jafune Gasman said they got help from family members to get recyclables needed to create the entries. Another challenge was the students were locked down in their homes, preventing the school from directly supervising the completion of the project. Gusman said it was the second time that their school joined the WRG. The first was in 2019 in Thailand, where grade 10 student Meljon Viste took home a bronze for his Enviro robot that can pick and take out garbage from canals and waterways. The Department of Health in Zamboanga has opened the online registration for those who want to avail of the COVID-19 vaccine. Meanwhile, hospitals in Bulacan commit to open their doors to COVID and non-COVID patients. More on these and other news from the provinces from Chris Chris Mundo. The Department of Health in Region 9 has opened an online COVID-19 vaccine registration. This after the OH9 received Saturday the shipment of the fifth batch of vaccines from the DOH central office. Those who wish to be inoculated can register at zambocovax.com. The latest shipment consisted of 25,200 doses of Sinovac vaccines for the A2 or senior citizens and A3 or persons with comorbidities. Some 26,000 senior citizens registered for vaccination. Meanwhile, both COVID-19 and non-COVID-19 cases will be accommodated in Bulacan government hospitals under the province's COVID-19 surge capacity plan. The Bulacan Medical Center and the Bulacan Infection Control Center would be the primary referral facilities for moderate to critical patients and suspect cases. The Kalumpit District Hospital will be the temporary maternity and children's hospital for non-COVID obstetrics and pediatrics cases, while the Emilio G. Perez District Hospital in Hagunoy will be a medical and pediatrics hospital. The Gregorio del Pilar District Hospital in Bulacan will function as a surgical hospital, while the San Miguel District Hospital, Baliwag District Hospital, and Rogasiano M. Mercado Memorial District Hospital in Santa Maria will continue to serve non-COVID-19 patients. Based on the April 30 update of the Department of Health, Bulacan has 3,473 active cases. In Bataan, Orani Cobb surprised public utility drivers with free coffee and bread on Sunday. A passerby also donated bread to be distributed to intelligence. The project Libreng Cafe sa Chuper was in support of the Barangayanihan program of the Philippine National Police where food pantries are put up outside or near stations. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Chris Crismundo. 
In sports, for his latest boxing achievement, IBF World Junior Bantamweight Champion and Philippine Navy Reservist Jerwin Ancajas was accorded Philippine military second highest award for civilians and government officials. Ancajas, who was the rank of Navy Senior Chief Petty Officer, was given the Gawad sa Kaunlaran Award in recognition of his convincing win over Jonathan Rodriguez in a title bout held last April 11 in Connecticut, United States of America. It was the Filipino prize fighter's ninth successful defense of the crown he won in 2016. He personally received the award from Naval Reserve Command Commander Rear Admiral Dorvin Legaspi. Legaspi said Ancajas brought honor and pride to the country, the AFP, the Philippine Navy, and the Naval Reserve Command. Overseas Filipino workers in India are doing their best to cope with the onslaught of COVID-19 and survive its effects. Annabel Joy Villamarin, a primary school principal in Gurugram City, said she expects a worst-case scenario as 400,000 are infected and 3,000 killed by COVID-19. To keep themselves safe, Villamarin said they do not go out and instead order their needs online. William Marin said, based on what she is reading, she said the Philippines is faring way better. About 2,000 Filipinos are living and working in India. In celebration of the month of the ocean this May, the Department of Tourism in Region 11 led scuba diving enthusiasts and government agencies in a synchronized cleanup in Barangay Santa Cruz, Talikud Town, in the island garden city of Samal. At least 47 school basureros from the local government, Philippine Coast Guard, Navy, and the PNP Regional Maritime Unit participated in the said cleanup. Volunteer coastal sweepers also helped to remove beach trash in the coastal areas while scoopers scarred the shoreline to remove marine debris in the shallow area. DOT 11 Director Tanya Rabatan said the cleanup is in line with the agency's advocacy to protect Samal Island and other local destinations. Tan said the DOT is committed to support the island city's drive in protecting its coastal resources and its residents' source of livelihood. Here's another look at today's biggest stories. Result on clinical trials on Lagundi, DCO, and Tawa Tawa as anti-COVID treatment will be out by June. Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana says the president is firm on his order to defend the country amid the row in the disputed West Philippine Sea. More health experts are warning the public against the indiscriminate and unregulated use of ivermectin. And the PMA's top notcher for this year hails from Negros Occidental. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check more news content, visit our webpage or head onto the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, we tell stories that inspire change. I am William Theo. Good day. Stay safe, everyone.